Hey, this is Jay from the Infinite Rabbit Hole, leaving a voicemail while listening to The Beast of Bray Road, Part 2, and you're listening to The Infinite Rabbit Hole. Approved for release, September 2003, CIA Document Library, June 1983, written to the commander of the U.S. Army Operational Group at Fort Meade, Maryland. He tasked me to provide an assessment of the Gateway experience in terms of its mechanics and ultimate practicality. As I set out to fulfill that tasking, it soon became clear that in order to assess the validity and the practicality of the process, I needed to do enough supporting research and analysis to fully understand how and why the process works. Frankly, sir, that proved to be an extremely involved and difficult business. Began the narrative by briefly profiling the fundamental biomedical factors affecting such related techniques as hypnosis, biofeedback, and transcendental meditation so that their objectives and mode of functioning could be compared in the reader's mind with the gateway experience. Welcome to the Gateway Process. Welcome back to Infinite Rabbit Hole. Jeff. What's up, guys? Jeff, you just tripped me out. I was I was so excited. I was like, I'm gonna get to do some tribal music. I'm like, he's gonna say something in the middle, and I'm just gonna throw some tribal music in the middle of it and stuff, but I guess not. Your it was this your first introduction. Was it? No, it wasn't. Yes, yeah, it like is right in the beginning. This is your first one you've ever actually done. No, dude, Atlantis. <laughs> I don't think right. you did a intro on Atlantis did you I don't know maybe like 15 minutes into the thing yeah I I think that Jake just made an introduction out of like your first paragraph (laughs) oh yeah that might be that might be the case (laughs) that might be the case no good job man applause yeah okay thanks I didn't I didn't make any of that up for the record um so just so everybody kind of knows tonight uh, obviously we're missing kid, right? So it's just me, Jake, and Jeremy here this evening. So there's that. But this, what I'm really going to be doing tonight is mostly just reading through this document. Again, if anybody listening wants to pull this document up for yourself, it's called the Analysis and the Assessment of Gateway Process. And this is in the CIA document library. So if you search that Analysis and Assessment of Gateway Process, You'll find a link. It'll be a CIA.gov link. You can pull that up. It's a PDF. It's the whole thing. So I'm basically going to be reading through this document probably over the course of the next two, maybe three episodes, depending. It's only 20 something pages, but you know, it's pretty dense stuff. So most of this is pretty dense. It all deals with alternate states of consciousness, you know, all kinds of weird woo but it's coming from, you know, these of these high level officials in the military and these other scientists and such, and presented to again the commander at the uh, at Fort Meade in the eighties. So, does before, go ahead. Do uh, do things like uh, Project Stargate fall under this? Um, ye, I would say so. Be, not necessarily in the same project as this assessment. So really in a nutshell, what this is, the gateway experience is it's an altered state of consciousness where one might be able to reach 
uh, let's say, like the Akashic Records. Are you guys familiar with the Akashic Records? No. Yeah. No. It's like the Universal Library. It's where some people throughout history have written about a place in the universe where you can access all information in the universe, past, present, and future. Yeah, right? I LSD will do that. Right. So, which is an altered state of consciousness. <laughs> okay. So, the gateway experience is just another form of this. And again, what we're going to do probably on this first episode is just go through the three other things that we may know about that are somewhat related to the gateway experience. Again, like I read in the intro, hypnosis, uh, biofeedback, which we'll explain, and transcendental meditation, all of which are different ways of achieving these altered states of consciousness where one might reach said enlightened state and reach the Akashic records and a number of other things, basically escaping time and space using consciousness. Some hippy dippy shit. I like Definitely. it, dude. Let's do it. Right. So before I get into like the first couple parts of this, is there anything that you guys are curious about before we go? No, I'm uh I'm curious about all of it because I don't really know too much about this. Um other than the stuff that I did for the research on the uh, podcasters who stare at goats episode we did with talking with shadows. I don't know too much about this. So this is pretty cool. I'm both for and against um, altered states of minds and astral projection and all kinds of stuff. So I'm not entirely biased against this one. Like as okay. far as my believability that that sort of stuff is real and that can actually be accessed. I, I like think that, that it's possible. dangerous and shouldn't be trifled with, um, but that it's real. So I'm not immediately in a position where I am in most of this stuff or most things where I'm just like, that ah, fake, you know, I'm just, I'm open to this one. Although really? I don't want to be. Yeah. Really? I didn't. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't guess. Good. Yeah, this is good, this is good stuff. I no, mean, this I, isn't I, this isn't burning sage leaves and expecting something to change on the other side of the universe. You know, I, I don't no. believe that or willing you, things into existence like monsters that have no proof of their validity. But this is did you, uh, did you use that crystal I sent you as deodorant today? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the aura. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> well, um, I'm with you, Jake. I, I'm skeptical to a certain extent, but then I come across things like this and then I'm like, okay, maybe it's more real than I give it credit for. So we'll get into it. Hopefully we'll change your mind. There are 20 something pages. I'm going to try to get through like five. If I can get through five of these as dense as they are, then I'll be satisfied with this first little episode here. So let's just get into it. You guys ready? Ready. Yes, sir. Okay. So. <clears throat> introduction in order to describe the monroe institute technique for achieving altered states of consciousness the gateway experience involving brain hemisphere synchronization or hemisync it's important the most effective way to begin is to briefly profile the basic mechanics which underlay operation of related methods such as hypnosis transcendental meditation and biofeedback it is easiest to effectively describe what gateway is by beginning with a short description of those associated techniques that share some common aspects with the gateway experience, but which are nevertheless different. In this way, we can develop a frame of reference at the outset, which will provide useful concepts to explain and understand gateway by comparison. So let's start with hypnosis. According to the theories of psychologist Ronald Stone and the biomedical engineering models of Ishkov Bentov, hypnosis is basically a technique which permits acquisition of direct access to the sensory motor cortex and pleasure centers and the lower cerebral portions of the right side of the human brain following successful disengagement of the stimulus screening function of the less left hemisphere of the brain. So basically by distracting, I'm not reading now. So basically 
by distracting the left hemisphere of the brain, you can suggest things for the right hemisphere of the brain for the body to act upon. That's essentially what they're explaining as hypnosis in that first little bit right there. The left hemisphere of the brain is the self-cognitive, verbal, and linear reasoning component of the mind. It fulfills the function of screening incoming stimuli by categorizing, assessing, and assigning meaning prior to, uh, prior to allowing passage to the right hemisphere of the mind. The right hemisphere, which functions as the non-critical, holistic, non-verbal, and pattern-oriented component of the brain, appears to accept what the left hemisphere passes to it without question. Consequently, if the, le if the left hemisphere can be distracted, either through boredom or through reduction to a sephoric semi-sleep state, external stimuli to include hypnotic suggestions are allowed to pass unchallenged into the right hemisphere where they are accepted and acted upon directly. The result may, the result may involve an emotional reaction originating in the lower cerebral region, sensory motor responses requiring involvement of the cortex, and so on. So I'm going to kind of stop right there on this hypnosis section because it just goes deeper into like what hypnosis is. But I think we get the point. You're basically distracting the left hemisphere of the brain to input information to the right side of the brain, which will accept without question whatever the left is feeding it and act upon it accordingly. Does that make sense to everybody? You know, hypnosis is weird because like you see, like um, obviously they're not real magicians, but um, whatever they are, right? Like illusionists or whatever on stage. And some Hypnotists. of them, well, some of them are really good at hypnotism, right? That's part of their act that they do. And some people exclusively do hypnotist act. And it's, you can watch them on YouTube and stuff like that. There's a lot of shows in like Las Vegas and everything. And it's so easy to say like, oh, that stuff is so fake. But I've heard that a lot of what it is is just, you know, you just confuse the brain with so much stimuli. Like, you know, they, they want you to focus over here where they're talking really fast and then there's something going on over here and it just causes wires to cross and you just shut down. Um, but even still, you're like, you can look at it and just be like, well, this is totally fake. And I, I mean, I'll do that, right? I'm guilty of that. But the but the only way to know for sure if it's not fake would be to put myself in that situation to get hypnotized. And I'm never going to do that willingly because I'm not going to allow somebody to make me do something that I don't want to do. Right. So it's just like so I guess I'll never really know. But it is really interesting, like, you know, hearing you kind of break down, you know, even if this is, like you said, very dense but kind of like what's the scientific method of what's going on in this situation right here. Man, I have a topic that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And it's that this. Goes, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, but it goes very, very well with this. Um, it, I'm not going to give away the topic, but it delves very, very highly into the relationship between the left and right hemisphere. And knowing what I do know about particular things when it comes to science and medical uh, facts uh, with the brain, this is fascinating because if you can find a way, you know, distract the left hemisphere and communicate directly to the right, that would be, that'd be trippy. That'd be really trippy uh, because the right, oh, man, I don't want to give away too much, but there, there's this theory out there that there could possibly be two different personalities, two different, uh, uh, I don't even know how to put it. Um, so like the, the, the trigger word sounds as rutabaga and you snap someone's neck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, who knows this, this could, this could fall into the sleeper cell thing too, but no, I'm talking about like uh, consciousness. Okay, for some reason, I don't know why that was slipping my mind. Um, I thought there's you were a theory. Purposely, purposefully being vague. <clears throat> no, no, no. Well, <laughs> at the same time, yeah, I was being vague. I'm trying not to give too much away. I kind of just gave it all away. But uh, <laughs> anyways, I'll just give it all away. One of the episodes I want to do is on, on the uh, relationship between the two, two hemispheres of the brain. And the theory is called the split brain theory. And basically, um, basically by 
severing this nerve that connects the two hemispheres, you can unleash or basically open up the door to your to your right hemisphere where another consciousness is is sitting. Um, and a lo- everybody could have two consciousness in their two separate consciousses. I don't know. A conscious eye, right? Consciousnesses. <laughs> conscious, <laughs> not, conscious, not an eye. Yeah, conscious and an eye in their heads. And only one consciousness it actually shows through because it's the one that, that communicates, right? Your left hemisphere uh, or your left consciousness is the one that shows up because it the, the right hemisphere doesn't have a way to communicate. All communication and, and learning and filtering, like Jeff was saying, comes from your left hemisphere. Therefore, it is the dominant hemisphere uh so but you are are you saying right now that people with like mo- multiple personality disorder and stuff that they're actually functioning the way that they, we all would if our brains wasn't blocking so, off one of those personalities or whatever so one of the things that i will get into in the episode of schizophrenia right. and uh they have found through post you know autopsies after death um i was gonna say post-death autopsies but nobody's doing autopsy on a live person um that it does seem that the right hemisphere is healthier Hmm. in schizophrenics and that the connection between the left and right is diluted and which means that the the right side could become stronger um and actually take consciousness away from the left side and it gets scary because every single person in this world could potentially have two different consciousnesses, consciousness eye, in their in their heads. Um, and you know, I, I know we kind of took a, a a left turn there, but at the same time, it it fits in what you're kind of talking about here because people that are in hypnosis, they kind of act like zombies right or they just kind of do whatever they're told well if you can distract the left hemisphere and you could talk directly to the right how would the right act right they, the right can't necessarily speak can't reiterate anything it can't tell you what its thoughts are well jeremy like let that. me stop you right there because <laughs> i can actually answer that exact question for you if okay. you're shut if up you're, jeremy yeah, yeah, shut up yeah. jeremy if you guys like, are ready i'll just go ahead and jump to that yeah let's do oh, it okay all, all right. right so I'll, I'll just finish off this last little bit about the uh, hypnosis here so <clears throat> stimulation of the corresponding area on the cortex causes intermediate response in the associated portion of the body consequently induction of the suggestion that the left leg is numb if it reaches the right hemisphere unchallenged and is referred to the appropriate area of the sensory cortex will result in an electrical reaction being generated that will induce the feeling of numbness. Similarly, the suggestion that the person is experiencing a general feeling of happiness and well-being would be referred to the appropriate pleasure centers located in the lower cerebral portion of the cortex and the, uh, of the right hemisphere, excuse me, thereby inducing the suggested feeling of euphoria. Finally, suggestions such as one that informs the hypnotic subject that he enjoys enhanced concentration or powers of memory would be responded to in the right hemisphere by, the, by access, accessing unused information storage capacity normally held in reverse as a result of less left hemisphere selection and control processes. This aspect will become significant in the context of gateway process when attention is given to examining the way that hypnosis may be used to accelerate progress in the early stages of the gateway experience. So basically, when you do this hypnosis, right, if you can target somehow the right portion of the brain, you can literally induce physical feelings of numbness, etc. in the body, but you can also access memories that have since been stored away by the left hemisphere right? Whether it's a traumatic event or whatever it is, the left hemisphere of your brain is responsible for filtering that out. But in these situations like hypnosis, you can actually access that. Yeah, that's nuts. Because if you can get information to the right side of the brain without the left side filtering it, obviously, you know, when you hear something, it's got to go through the left hemisphere into the right hemisphere. 
you can basically trick your brain into thinking anything. Anything is true because like what Jeff was saying is that the right hemisphere basically listens to the left, left hemisphere without question. It does what it's told. So if you're telling the right hemisphere without the left hemisphere filtering it out that your leg is numb, your leg's going to become numb. It may not actually be numb, but you're going to feel it. Mm -hmm. Pretty neat stuff. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And also, forgive me, anybody listening, the punctuation in the document is shit. So that's why I'm kind of stumbling because right. where I would expect a comma or not and so on, it's just kind of... Yeah, Jeff well, can't it's a, read. It's we a gotta... Department of Defense right. document, like... The military <laughs> for comedy, so, you know. There you go. <laughs> Fucking shills. We don't have time for comedy. We got to kill people. <clears throat> Anyways, but that's pretty much it for like the introduction into hypnosis. We get the idea, right? So, is there any questions on how that works? No, but that's that's pretty cool. I I, I kind of want to skip a skip ahead on my topics and cover split brain more now i'm not going to because i have some really good stuff coming up but i will eventually get the split brain and it's gonna it's gonna be really cool especially after this dude let's just do a uh a documentary on hypnosis and get you over the sphere of snakes no yep yep we'll <laughs> no. be like snakes are great snakes are are your friends snakes are wanting to get hugged and we'll have you like oh, all up on like a ball python or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> no no i'm good all right then you can't believe it too much <laughs> <laughs> i think we're good great. jeff yeah <laughs> great perfect wonderful okay so <laughs> All right, just, just to reiterate, there's three basic pillars that you kind of have to understand to understand gateway. Hypnosis, trans transcendental meditation, and biofeedback. So we just went over hypnosis. Everybody's good. If you're listening and you still don't get it, sorry, we're moving forward. So <laughs> go back let's, and listen to it again. <laughs> yeah, go back and listen again. Um, Sucks to suck, loser. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's get into this. Transcendental meditation. On the other hand, transcendental meditation works in a distinctly different fashion. In this technique, intense and protracted single-minded concentration on the process of drawing energy up the spinal cord ultimately results in what appears to be creation of acoustical standing waves in the cer cerebral ventricles, which are then conducted to the gray matter in the cerebral cortex on the right side of the brain. As a result, according to Bentov, these waves will stimulate and eventually polarize the cortex in such a way that it will tend to conduct a signal along the homunculus starting from the toes on up. So basically what they're saying is during transcendental meditation and other forms of meditation as well, but kundalini meditation, right? What, they're, what you're doing is you are attempting to get a specific resonance within your body, right? And this resonance is caused, it's, it's actually super technical, but basically your heart is pumping at a certain rate and that fluid is flowing down into like the lower part of your body and then re the vibration from the actual pumping of your heart, that vibration goes down and resonates back up. And, it, and these resonations meet at a certain point, okay, in the middle of your body. And if you can get this resonation at a specific frequency, then you can accelerate this energy to the top of your crown. This is the whole crown chakra meditation, you know, enlightenment concept, right? And this essentially is affecting the different hemispheres of the brain as well. You guys with me so far? No. Yeah, I'm with you. Kundalini spirit, demonic possession, and that sort of stuff. Gotcha. <laughs> No, I'm uh, I'm completely lost, to be honest with you. Uh, okay. No problem. That's fine. We'll just keep reading. Maybe it'll click. All right. Kundalini psychosis or transcendence states that the standing acoustical waves, right, that I'm talking mm -hmm. about, are the result of the altered rhythm of heart sounds, which are occasioned by prolonged practice of meditation and which set up s sympathetic vibrations in the walls of the fluid-filled cavities, which comprise the third later lateral ventricles of the brain. So again, this reverberation of your heart, this frequency is going down and up, okay? So it's 
a matter of meditating and focusing and getting this frequency of this oscillation, this vibration, this oscillating frequency that's happening to a specific frequency. In addition, according to Bentov, the states of bliss described by those who whose kundalini symptoms have completed the full loop along the hemispheres may be explained as a self-stimulation of the pleasure centers in the brain caused by the circulation of a current along the sensory cortex. Bentov also notes that most of the described symptoms start on the left side of the body, means that it is mostly a development occurring on the right hemisphere. Although normally a period of meditation involving intense concentration and practice for five years or some is required to bring up the kundalini, Bentov states that exposure to mechanical or acoustical vibrations in the range of four to seven hertz for protracted periods may achieve the same effect. So basically, you can use sound frequencies to create the same experience that one would get from years and years of kundalini meditation. That enlightenment, that bliss feeling that they feel when they reach a certain point, you can essentially fake this or invoke this in the body using acoustic vibrations. Or drugs. Or drugs. <laughs> is, this, is this like the brown note? No, okay, well, that's no, but yes, that's kind of the same concept, no, but I yes, suppose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you know, vibrations affect everything, right? I've right. definitely hit the ground note with the subs. And we talked about this. Yeah. We talked about this on the last episode. Remember when I asked why cats purr and Jeremy said they purr for healing because of this vibrating frequency? So it's the same type of thing. Kundalini transcendental meditation is invoking this vibrational frequency from within to achieve an altered state of consciousness. So just just for clarification, basically this is you controlling the rhythm of your heartbeat to match a, a specific frequency. That's a very simplistic, dumbed-down version, yes. Okay. There's much more that's into it. It has to do with, you know, like I believe like polarity and electrical signals that you can somehow manipulate within the body and magnetic fields. I don't know. It's a whole thing. I just kind of dumbed it down because it's already super dense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dense. So. Thick. Thick. Anyways. Two, that's, two C's. That's the second, pretty much the pillar that you kind of need to understand for the gateways. Anybody, any questions? Are we good? I got the dumbed down to... version of it. You got the dumbed down version of it. Go for it. I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay. So let's talk about the third thing, biofeedback. Yes. Hey, everybody. Bear with us while we take this quick break. The third consciousness-altering methodology, which will be briefly described, is biofeedback. Biofeedback is somewhat unique in that it actually employs the self-cognitive powers of the left hemisphere to gain access to such areas of the right brain as the lower cerebral motor and sensory cortexes, cortices, excuse me, and assorted pain and pleasure centers. Instead of suppressing the left hemisphere, as is done in hypnosis, or largely bypassing and ignoring it, as is done in transcendental meditation, biofeedback teaches the left hemisphere first to visualize the desired result and then to recognize the feelings associated with the experience of successful right hemisphere access to the specific lower cerebral cortex, pain or pleasure or other areas, and to produce the desired result. So basically, instead of ignoring, or excuse me, instead of distracting or suppressing the left side to access the right hemisphere, hypnosis, or instead of just ignoring the left side and going straight to the right hemisphere like meditation, this is essentially teaching the left hemisphere of the brain how to do what one may call manifestation. You're literally looking and, and uh, assuming a certain feeling, fully grasping it, and then sending those signals to the right hemisphere of the brain, creating the same sort of altered state of consciousness. You guys picking up what I'm putting down? Slightly. God, yeah, man. it kind of sounds like what uh, what my therapist 
told me to do the other day, and I was just like, no thanks. <laughs> I almost well, want to ask what that is, but I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. No, so um, I was having a bunch of nightmares anyway, so I, I was like, whatever. You know, I'm a mental health like advocate and stuff, so I was just like, yeah, military stuff, sign myself up for some counseling appointments, right? Um, and I have a really bad lower back. Like I, I've blown out my sciatic nerve a couple times. I, uh, ripped a muscle in my back and it's just like daily back pains. And so I had a really, I had a physical therapy appointment and I was all jacked up afterwards, right? Physical therapy and I'm worse off. But anyway, so <laughs> I'm talking to him about it in this appointment and he was just like, yeah, what I do whenever I, you know, when I broke my collarbone is that I just meditated on it and I, um, focused on the muscles surrounding those inflamed muscles surrounding that collarbone. And I, I recognized that they were hurting and I, I, I told them that it's okay and that you can go ahead and relax. You don't need to, to be flared up and, and encasing this, uh, this joint or this bone and, um, protecting it, you know, we're, we're safe. You can relax. You can, you know, calm down. And he's like, and I was able to get it to calm down. You should do that for your lower back. Just focus on that pain and those muscles tensing up and, you know, getting all hard and tell them to relax and all that stuff. And I'm just like, nah. (laughs) 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 I don't know. They make pills to tell your muscles to relax. They do. And... I, I don't know. I'm I'm listening to this and I just, you know, just thought about that. And I'm just like, I was like, I, I don't know. That's kind of where that, that bias comes in. It's like, I don't, I think that some of this is definitely real. But some of this is like, you know, it's like, how much control do you really have? I mean, most people can't even control their own hiccups. Like, <laughs> you know, and then they're talking about, oh, I'm going to change the vibrations inside of my body. And, you know, I'm going to get this kundalini experience it's just like okay well you know do you experience hiccups well you have to think about this right like on one hand i get what you're saying right and i've i have mixed feelings about this as well so i'm kind of with you but at the same time i think it's real as well so yeah at the same time it goes back so many thousands of years every single culture does some form of meditation to achieve some sort of altered consciousness and people are doing it right now like whether they're everyone's full of shit maybe but so there is some level to that you know and and I'm not going to read like this this other bit on the biofeedback because it just kind of goes into some of the um, studies and results, and it's just like super extra dense. I wouldn't, I can't even understand it reading it. But the the last bit I do understand, and it just says basically pain can be blocked, healing can be enhanced, malignant tumors can can apparently be suppressed and ultimately destroyed. The body's pleasure centers can be stimulated, and a variety of specific physiological results may be achieved. Now again, this is. In the, the 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 analysis of this entire process, this guy has gone through all this research with, you know, who knows how much funding and scientists well, and all this shit. So yeah, but you got to figure like, this is all Eastern mysticism and type stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like Hindu cultures, they do a lot of this sort of meditation and stuff, right. all the chakra stuff. I think that there is cause to go into, you know, how many people in India that practice this sort of stuff die of cancer every single year and stuff because i i think there's something to be said i mean you can make some crazy outrageous claims about something you could say oh eating a spoonful of sugar every single day you know whatever x y and z you know cures leukemia but if you have a tremendous amount of people that if you go into researching it and you're like wow all these people did this every single day and they all died of leukemia then you could say that that claim is is baloney so from the face of it, reading it and saying, oh, well, it cures this and it does that. Um, but there is a cause for that to then look into it and be like, well, you know, onesie twosies aren't good enough to claim that this actually does anything, you know, because those are for sure. flukes. And it's like um, like uh, that purring thing for cats, right? It's it's purring for healing. Well, how effective is it? Because Branch purred all the time, and that cat was sick as crap and would spray mm-hmm. mucus all over the wall and stuff. So right. how effective is that, right? It's, it's to like, heal you, not well, the cat. Well, I mean, I've been super sick around cats all the time. 
Whitney well, is allergic so to cats, and she's not healed by that. There's so <laughs> much that goes into it that you can't just say, you can't blanket and say, oh, look, all these people meditate every day and they're dying of cancer, so clearly meditating doesn't cure cancer. No. What, what they're saying in this is that with the extent of the studies that they did and the research that they did and the results that they got through these, again, they were using mechanical and acoustic stuff like they were enhancing this they weren't just meditating and figuring this out they were using the tools provided to them through funding right to like build a laboratory and make this shit happen and figure out what the results were and they were able to see these results so you could take I mean, that back and say there's probably a few people in india who've been practicing their whole life who have mastered it and maybe have killed tumors we don't know but it's the same as with anything else how many people are believers in christ for instance but mm -hmm. kind of or barely or mostly like they don't really go to church or they're maybe they're practicing to some extent but not fully it's, it's the same kind of thing so who's to say who's practicing it perfectly to achieve the results that they did at the monroe institute so hmm. i believe that in a diluted sense that you can control certain things right and it all just comes down to a state of mind that's what i was told when i was younger i remember um i actually had a soccer coach when i was really young who had told me that cold being cold was just a state of mind right and, uh, you know and I, I didn't really understand it until i got a little older and uh somebody else had repeated the exact same phrase to me i was actually living in florida where it doesn't get that cold uh <laughs> but it dropped below 50 degrees and i was cold oh, geez. and <laughs> somebody had said somebody had said to me cold is just a state of mind man and i'm, I'm like hmm and i really thought about it and you know what's crazy is that now i don't get cold very very easily um it's something that I, I kind of live by, right? I go outside and it's 30 degrees out and I'm t-shirt and shorts, perfectly fine. Uh, but if I'm going to go out there for hours on end, obviously, yes, I'm going to get cold. And that's what I mean by small doses, right? If I'm going to go out and put, take the trash out or, you know, move the garage around to do like these little tasks, you know, being, being a little chilly is fine. You know, where I know some people that won't even step foot outside their door without bundling up with seven layers if it's if it's in the 30s. Um, yeah, I mean, and yeah, I agree. I mean, there's something to that. I mean, there's a guy. Geez, I have no idea what his name is um, <laughs> <laughs> or wh what country he's in. But there's a, a person on the face of the earth <laughs> that I'm sure has a name that teaches people how to bathe and how to exist naked in sub-zero temperatures yeah. right and so and he will do like these you know sort of programs and stuff and it, it's pretty ex it, incredible i saw this thing on discovery channel literally like the first day that they're in this program he he cuts a hole in a frozen river in a frozen lake he cuts a hole in the ice and he throws them in there and he says all right you're gonna sit in here for 30 minutes <laughs> And these people are freezing, right? And then he pulls them out and he sends them over to like the sauna or whatever. And he teaches people through this like six week course how to control the temperature in your own body, how to focus on it and be like, I'm warm right now. I'm not cold. I'm warm. And then this guy runs freaking marathons in his boxers in like negative 20 degree weather and, you know, through the snow barefoot and all kinds of stuff. And he does all this sort of stuff. And he's trying to teach people how to do this and it all involves meditation. So I can't say for certainty that all this is just, you know, nonsense um, because I don't I don't think that anyway. But um, I also can't say that this is 100 percent could be replicated for everybody. You know, like if for sure if one person was able to cure um, cancer or, you know, remove a tumor using meditation. um. I think that obviously there'd be some flack and pushback from like big pharma. Um, but for the most part, people would, I think all of us would be meditating false all the time. You, you don't I, think I, so? No, absolutely not. I think that most people would continue doing exactly what they're doing now, which is consuming a hell of a lot of sugar, fast food, not exercising, not doing anything to take care of themselves. Just like we always do because we're comfortable, at least here in the West. Right. And I think that even if you knew that, Meditating because meditating is not just something you, you don't just sit down and meditate and have a 
you know, a Kundalini experience, you know, even if you do it every day for five years, right? Like, again, this is something that is an art form in some regards, right? It takes an excessive amount of time and focus and patience. And most people who practice it never achieve that. It's not something that, you know, you, you, there's so many, you can go online, right? And people meditate, everybody, the, the 22 year old girl down the street meditates, but is she achieving or even coming close to that experience that's being described? I could almost guarantee you no. You no, but she's probably getting what she wants out of it. It's sure. Co- I'm it's, not... sort of, it's sort of like a placebo effect, right? Where, mm-hmm. you know, you sit down and you're like, well, I'm not going to get a tumor. And that, this is a very extreme thing, right? I'm, uh, or extreme example. It's pro- probably nowhere near true. But you can sit down and what whatever you focus on or what you're expecting to get out of it is most likely what you're going to get. So, mm-hmm. like, for example, right, I, I suffer from PTSD from an event that happened in my military career and uh early on in in my treatment they first tried to attack my nightmares that i was having and they prescribed a blood pressure medication very very low dose of blood pressure medication and literally from the first pill that i took all the way till now it's been like three or four years now i have not had a nightmare and, you know, you look it up and they, they, there's all this medical stuff that says this is why you're not having nightmares under this medication. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a strange side effect to it. This specific blood pressure medication that you just in PTSD victims, they no longer have um, nightmares. Is it a placebo effect? That's what I think. I think it's a placebo effect. I'm not going to question it. I'm not going to go too much further because. It's working for me, right? Uh, I think I think certain things, certain inputs to people's minds and thoughts and everything can definitely affect their outputs. You know uh, what what the end is. So, like for me, I say, hey, hey, dude, you're not cold, man. You're good. You know, it's only thirty degrees, and you can sit out here for forty five minutes to an hour before your your skin even begins to tingle like you're not gonna you're not you're not gonna suffer from frostbite you're good to go right but then you know i I step out in negative 20 and my whole my whole story changes because that's a completely different story that's not small doses that's not something where a placebo can help you you know Mm -hmm. unless you're that guy that jake was talking about who, who you know you can teach yourself to treat it differently and have your body react to it differently, you know, not get frostbite from being out in extreme cold. I don't know. I, that that's pretty neat. Actually. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I've seen that guy, I th- but I think, Oh, sorry. I thought you no, were... no, no, go ahead. Cause I'm just going to keep. Well, I have the talking. same, I have the same reservations against most things where they have such a, a broad, spectrum or it's just like a broad blanket statement like people that say like cannabis cannabis cures cancer i've heard that oh my gosh most people that i know that smoke cannabis will justify and say well cancer well cannabis is medicine and it cures cancer and then you hit them with bob marley died of melanoma and they're like oh well not all cancers and you're like oh so this blanket statement that you throw out is ridiculous right maybe a cancer or, and I agree, you know, CBD, yeah, we see what it's doing and, and people enjoy it. And it's like, it helps people and like, it helps with anxiety. Well, this is a stuff, perfect right? example. But it's just like, but I look at that, that broad scale and I'm just like, well, a onesie twosie event isn't necessarily like some groundbreaking type stuff. No, so, this is a perfect example. And I think that the healthy skepticism is good, right? But I think that like you're saying with the blanket statements, right? Like, does smoking weed cure cancer? No, there's no evidence of that. But is there evidence to suggest that administering certain forms of cannabis, whether it's extracted THC oils or whatever the case is, mm-hmm. administering it in a certain particular way, targeting a certain particular cancer, there have been results. And it's the same thing with this right. meditation idea. Yes, again, everybody and their brother's uncle says that they meditate, but how many of them, like I'm, I would imagine meditating. point... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many are reaching an actual Kundalini experience? They're really in getting to that point that the ancient mystics spoke about that spawned this whole idea for generations to come of people meditating, right? Like, 
very small percentage of people are actually hitting that point. And even if they are, they're who's to say that they're targeting something to a level to where we could test and say that this is or is not killing a tumor. Apparently, mm. these guys did at some least form once. of this. At least once. They did this in a lab again with with devices and, and outside mm. help probably and who knows what else. But that's aside from the point. The, the point is that there is something to it. And really, we're not even talking about the gateway experience yet, right? We're only talking about the three pillars to give us a, a frame of reference of what the gateway experience is. Because it's not hypnosis, meditation, or biofeedback. It's something mm -hmm. similar but different to those things. So we've just now got to that point. We've just laid the foundation for this. All right, Jeff. So what is the gateway process, my friend? <laughs> Do you want me to read all 29 pages to you right now without stopping? Here we go. Ready? Let's go. One, two, three. No. <laughs> no. no. Um, so, I mean, is, is this something that we're going to talk about tonight or are we going to move? Yeah, I'm going to read one more section of this tonight. Okay. And we'll have, again, we'll, this will be a multi-episode thing. There's no mm -hmm. way to fully get it. But so let me just get to this last bit and then we can go from there. So okay. one second, because I'm going to burp because I've been drinking Mountain Dew for the last hour. Ew, gross. <clears throat> Bro, let it out. Let's hear it right in the mic. I don't drink much soda anymore, but when I do. Do it right in the mic, ooh, man. I get a little gassy. Okay. <laughs> gassy boy. <clears throat> Here we go. <laughs> Gateway and Hemisync. Now that we've briefly profiled the basic mechanics of the principal techniques for altering or expanding consciousness, which share some of the objectives and or methods employed in the gateway experience, we may proceed to focus on what that technique actually involves. Fundamentally, the gateway experience is a training system designed to bring enhanced strength, focus, and coherence to the amplitude and frequency of brainwave output between the left and right hemispheres so as to alter consciousness moving it outside the physical sphere so as to ultimately escape even the restrictions of time and space hmm. the participant then gains access to the various levels of intuitive knowledge which the universe offers what differentiates the gateway experience from forms of meditation is its use of the hemisync technique, which is defined in a monograph by the Monroe Institute trainer Melissa Yeager as a state of consciousness defined when the EEG patterns of both hemispheres are simultaneously equal in amplitude and frequency. Although hemisync seems to be rather rare and of only short duration in ordinary human consciousness, Melissa Yeager states that audio techniques developed by Bob Monroe can induce and sustain hemisync with the Institute's basic Focus 3 tapes. She also notes that studies conducted by Elmer and Alice Green at the Menninger Foundation have shown that a subject with 20 years of training in Zen meditation could consistently establish hemisync at will, sustaining it for over 15 minutes. Dr. Stuart Twemlow, a, a psychiatrist and a research associate of the Monroe Institute, reports that in our studies of the effect of the Monroe tape system on brain waves, we have found that the tapes encourage the focusing of the brain energy, can be measured as with a light bulb in watts, into a narrower and narrower frequency band. This focusing of energy is not unlike the yoga concept of one-pointedness which we may translate in Western terms as a single-mindedness. Dr. Twemlow goes on to observe that as the individual gets into the tapes beyond focus three, there is a gradual increase in the brainwave size, which is a measure of brain energy or power. So, Dumb there's the tapes. For me. <laughs> there are tapes. There are tapes that the Monroe Institute developed that you can listen to that will induce this altered state of consciousness, this hemisync. Basically what they're saying is that if you can sync the two hemispheres of the brain, same frequency, same amplitude, that you achieve this hemisync, this state of altered consciousness, whereby you can escape space and time. You can leave your body. You could do forms of astral projection, 
Um, in this document, they talk about time travel, <clears throat> talking about going to the past, going to the future. They talk about all kinds of out-of-body experiences and everything else because of this hemi-sync gateway experience. And again, there are tapes that you can listen to that apparently invoke this. To help your brain, both your hemispheres, it, it basically helps it to, mm -hmm. to sync up on a certain frequency. So basically what you're saying is that if you can sync up your left and your right hemisphere, you can, you can basically have out of body experiences. You can take yourself, your consciousness out of the physical body and into the ethereal realm. Um, basically you have access to all the knowledge of the universe and also just being able to do whatever you want, wherever you want, whenever you want. Right. So basically if, if it's something that's perceived as 15 minutes from the outside, like a doctor sitting there taking notes for 15 minutes uh, on what your body is physically doing, laying there on the couch, doing nothing, but you can perceive it as years, decades, centuries, uh, and then come back to your body with all the knowledge that you gained in that time. Yeah, that's that's definitely a, a possible thing you could do with this, for sure. Or you could do like the Back to the Future almanac, and you could place bets on sporting events and win it every single time. That's probably why it's not so public. <laughs> that's probably why it's not real. <laughs> no. well, well, it's again, this is most definitely real because this stuff, th this is exactly like what Jeremy asked at the beginning <clears throat> is this project Stargate and these other programs. They were doing this. They were doing psychic assassin programs, right? Where they were literally getting people who were remote viewers to locate mm -hmm. enemy across the freaking world in bunkers and, and shit. they had some people that were really fucking good at it too yeah right like the men who stare at goats that movie mm -hmm. is based on a real story so yeah. but then this why kind of, isn't it done anymore who says it's not oh i think it I mean, is the, the the guy who was loading his car with containers full of water and that got shot by a hellfire missile would have something to say about why we're not astral projecting and and finding who the actual enemies are well, you got to make sure that you don't have power in the population. Okay, you can't it, you can't just come out with it, right? So I'm actually kind of curious as to why this this uh this document is even for public access on the CIA website. It's very interesting. I mean, I I guess once things like Project Stargate and a, a bunch of other things came out, um maybe they had to have something to kind of go along with that they had to declassify something and maybe this was what it was. I don't think that this is anywhere near all that there is, but it's interesting. And, you know, I could see it. I could see it being a possibility and it's very intriguing. I know Jake is not digging this whatsoever. No, I'm just listening. Um, this is just my listening face. Mm, oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. So my, here's my, face. here's my, uh, my question to you, Jake. Mm. Right. And That's I'm only question. picking on you because you seem to be the most skeptical, right? It, yes. You realize what I'm reading, right? Like where this came lies from. from the government. <laughs> Very well could be. <laughs> to make Very us well believe that they're way more powerful hey, than we give them credit for. If you want to make that argument, I'm with you 100%. <laughs> okay. Psy I forgot my right? chill hat, so I have to go the other way. <laughs> yeah, total psyop. Could be, could be. But let's just say it's not, right? Okay. Again, this is this assessment of this whole process being written to literally the, the freaking top dog at the, at Fort Meade. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and again, it was classified for 20 years. Like this is lies for some, funding. <laughs> could be, could be. <laughs> or, okay. All right. It's all legit. Right. right. And like, there's some real truth behind being able to access this etheric realm and do things that we would consider like supernatural right okay so let me let me kind of i'm not going to backpedal i'm going to pull back into mm. where i'm actually what i actually believe right so this guy i want to get on the show he um i can't i can never remember his name i have to look up on youtube every single time and be like oh this guy um bob barker he, not bob barker he's dead um <laughs> even <back. laughs> Jeez. get him on <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Stop we'll yelling go into hemisync and then we'll 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 communicate with Bob Barker. <laughs> uh 
new age. Well, while he's he's looking at it, this is it. this is some pretty interesting stuff. Um, I I do definitely believe in frequencies. Um, oh, I, got I don't I don't think it's as easily achieved as these thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that are on Facebook who claim that they are, you know, they can sync their whatever and astral project i believe a few people can do it and i feel i feel that you know uh if you're properly trained you can you can be a tool or a weapon uh used against other astral projectors um i I believe there 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 very well could be a battle going on uh on a plane that we don't eat what 99.9 percent of the population doesn't even know exists go ahead jake Okay, so there is a guy that I'd like to get on the podcast, or I'd like had the idea of doing for some time. Um, guy's name was Stephen Bancars, and apparently he was a pretty big heavy hitter in the New Age movement, um, where people mix mix Christianity and Eastern mysticism. So it includes a lot of this sort of stuff, Kundalini spirit, astral projection, that sort of stuff, right? And he now after leaving that exposes that new age movement for this demonic entity that it has become. Um, and that all this stuff is super bad and opens you up to all kinds of demonic oppression and all kinds of stuff. Right. Um, but he had, he said at 20 years old, he had three books out on how you can astral project, how you could do all this sort of stuff, you know, how you could, uh, go into meditation and, and slip into this altered state of consciousness and he was making like, you know, two hundred thousand dollars a year at twenty years old from these book sales and teaching people how to astral project and stuff. Until he had this awakening where he realized how evil this was and how you know how uh, well, yeah, how evil it was. And so now he goes and he goes onto a lot of podcasts and he explains the whole thing and like how he came out of that and everything like that. And and he really fights against that that stuff. So. I don't, again, I'm not for this or against this. I think that it's real to an extent. I think that people can astral project. I think that people can, um, you know, get into these altered states of, of consciousness and stuff. Um, but then there's always something that kind of pulls it back, which is like like this, like this whole idea of, you know, this, getting people that astral project to go and find and locate the bad guys. But when we have these horrible mistakes where we, you know, bomb the wrong person and then we're like, Oh shoot. And now we got to pay this tribe, you know, a million dollars so that they'll stop, you know, talking about it. And we create, you know, you know, maybe we, I don't know, we might, might create more terrorists because these people are like, Oh, these Americans just, you know, just killed Bob for no reason and stuff. I hate them. You know, I don't know, right? What the implication is of that. So, but we, but now that could be part of a plan and all sorts. Of, I don't know. But it's just like it's just weird that it's just like, you know, there. This is a Department of Defense document, and these people obviously put some tremendous amount of time into it. Um, but it doesn't appear to be that that stuff is still going on, at least not to some grand large scale, and. You know, you'd think that, I don't know, the people that kind of invented this, which would be, you know, on the eastern side of the earth, <laughs> that they would have officials that would be doing this sort of stuff. And, you know, whomever their enemies are, that there'd be no issue. I mean, it's just kind of, it's weird that it seems to be kind of so hush-hushed and stuff. If it's, I mean, because it's, it's not like, it's not like it's entirely, um, inaccessible right it's like i've heard about this from many many sources over you know the last decade that i can kind of remember as far as like you know anybody talking about you know things that can be done with meditation but then on one side you did just read a section where it's talking about um what is it that this guy was doing this for 20 years before he even got to this point and in that circumstance i mean yeah uh foundation have shown that the subject with 20 years of training in the zen meditation would consistently establish hemi sync at will 
I've been trying to learn how to play the guitar and learn Spanish for like 10 years and I can't play the guitar and I don't <laughs> know Spanish. So I have no attention span, even if I didn't think that it was, you know, a demonic thing or it would put your, put you open yourself up for demons and things like that. Even if I had a desire to learn how, I don't have the attention span for it. So, I mean, I'll just die of cancer, I guess. So a few things. <laughs> One, I totally agree that doing these types of things, playing around in altered states of consciousness, I definitely agree is super dangerous. And I totally think, I think what Jeremy was alluding to is that there may be some form of what some people call a spiritual war happening, something going right. on, on the etheric realm, a battle that's happening that none of us are aware of. And I think that when yep. you do these, these types of things, when you enter altered states of consciousness, whether it's through meditation or listening to the focus 13 tapes or smoking dmt or whatever it is i think you do run a risk of opening yourself up to entities or what you may call demons right same mm -hmm. thing in my mind i think that that's totally legit i think the guy you're referring to who is ousting this as a mm -hmm. demonic practice and how the new age movement is a demonic movement i totally agree with that and i'm not suggesting that people should go out and attempt to do all of these things in the gateway process i'm only stating that what it's basically a possibility that you can. it's not only a possibility that, but that it is real okay so let me i want to read one last little piece from this i wasn't planning on reading this tonight but i'm going to read this because this is the part that got me interested in this document to the be from the beginning and it's probably the most profound thing i've ever read in any government document so here it goes ready <clears throat> the consciousness matrix the universe is composed of interacting energy fields, some at rest and some in motion. It is, in and of itself, one gigantic hologram of unbelievable complexity. According to the theories of Carl Pribram, a, a neuroscientist at Stanford University, and David Bohm, a physicist at the University of London, the human mind is also a hologram, which attunes itself to the universal hologram by the medium of energy exchange, thereby deducing meaning and achieving the state which we all call consciousness. Do you guys understand what I just read? I am I am tracking. I'm I'm literally reading it with you. Are you no, gonna I, read the rest? I don't know. I'm gonna stop right there. Oh I don't know where you're reading that from. It's uh, bullet point fourteen on page eleven. The so consciousness matrix. This is basically Again, it's saying that the universe is essentially some form of hologram, and our mind is also a hologram that decodes the universal hologram to give us what we call consciousness. Bro, we live in a simulation. So would people tell you if they wanted you to believe that you don't matter and nothing you're ever going to do matters? This is true, too. So again, yeah, I'm, you know, hey, we could play the this is a giant psyop document. I'm I'm totally with that. I battle with that idea all the time when I think about this, just so you know. So what is the definition of a matrix to them? That's the question, right? Everyone has an idea of what a matrix is. A matrix is basically a blank slate. Uh, that's my idea of a matrix, right? The, the blank slate in which an artist or somebody can put their art or thoughts onto to create something, right? What is their definition here? Because this is something that I think that uh, a lot of people have issues with is just the recognition of definitions. Sure. Words matter, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's true. So if you're if you're looking at this, right, and somebody like us, we're looking at this and we're saying, okay, they're talking about these matrices. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to trying to do two things at once here. Uh, the hologram of uh, the universe and stop me if I'm sounding stupid here. Uh, holograms of the universe and holograms of the mind, right? And is that what it said? I'm trying to find it. Real quick. Uh, uh yeah, basically, yeah, again, the universe is a hologram, and and I get what you're saying, right? Like, what do they mean by hologram? Right. And, and that is a good question, but I think 
realistically, when you get when you when we end up reading through this whole thing, we'll understand what they mean by matrix and hologram. And what they're basically saying is that we live in a a giant like electrostatic field of some kind, some electromagnetic or some kind of weird energy field, the universe, right? Mm -hmm. And and that our minds are decoding this energy information and giving us consciousness, right? And that we can escape that version of it. We can escape what we're perceiving and creating as consciousness out, and we can get outside of this and experience a different form of, of that consciousness. So it's not necessarily, it's not like the movie, the matrix. It's not like uh, when I say we live in a simulation, it's not like we live literally in a simulation. It's just that we are living in some weird projection that our mind is grabbing and decoding for us to understand. And there's a way for us to step away from that projection into a different projection. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is this is very interesting stuff. It is, and especially coming from the CIA. I mean, yeah, anybody who, anybody who who's listening to this and wants to see this documentation, this document, highly recommend it. It's called the Analysis and Assessment of Gateway Process. Literally, the first thing that pops up in Google. Uh, it even says that it was approved for release. Uh, looks like September tenth, two thousand three. Um, it has the department of the army stamp at the top. I mean, this is, you know, coming from somebody who's been in the Navy, uh, Jake and myself, we can look at this and say, yep, this looks like shit that we get all the time. Yeah, this um, looks like this... every time we get a new CO and they throw out a new policy form, it has the, <laughs> all the same crap up on the top. Yeah. Department I mean, defense just... logo, all that stuff. I mean, we yeah, have it's, an official, but, it's an official letter. Yeah. It, there's yeah. no doubt about that. It's so it, it this is this is pretty wild. You would not expect unless you're into this sort of stuff, which Jeff is because he knows about it. But you would not expect that something like the Department of Defense would be looking into meditation and astral projection. Unless like that, there's a, a use for it. That's, Unless there's that, a use for it. Well, yeah, getting into it, man, what's what's at the bottom of this to see if we can use it for uh, militarily and stuff. Right. And yeah. I believe Jake had said something earlier about, you know, uh, this just kind of being like the surface or some something along those lines. I, I have to agree. I don't know. I don't, can't remember which one of you guys said it, but uh, I don't think everything's here. Right. And I'm, I'm very interested to keep going. Right. We've. Are we going to backtrack a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we might. Um, we're, we're not just going to start from that consciousness matrix part. I mean, I really okay. just read through one through five. I, I went through section one through five. So yeah, because I'm I'm looking at some of these bullet points, man, and I'm like, we need to we need to talk about this. We need to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, dude, listen, uh, let's just give a teaser, man, because people want to know what what might. Come. I mean, listen, dude, there's a section on here. Let me find it real quick. Uh, well. So one of them, like brain stimulation, energy and uh, entrainment, uh, consciousness and energy. That's literally like the, the question I was asking. They're going to the definition of this. And then the very next one, number 12, holograms. Mm -hmm. What do they mean by holograms? What is the CIA defining as a hologram? It's right when do here. We, when do we get into the area where you can say something to somebody and their head explodes? Like, that's what I want to know. <laughs> there's, there's none of that. It's none of that crazy stuff. But no, you're right. There is sections about that hologram. Yep. The part encodes the whole. That's an entire section. Again, the consciousness matrix. It you talks know. more about the brain being in phase. Yep. Self-cognition. So, yep. Self-cognition. I just saw that one. Time, space, dimension, intervening dimensions. Looks... See, this is that's that's literally what the time space dimension. That is what I want to go into, because that's going to be where they define their matrix. Mm -hmm. Right. That's where they're going to define all this stuff. Intervening dimensions. Like, is it a dimension as to what we think of? But, ah, oh, dude, they go into subatomic particles, dimensions in between. Yeah. Oh, dimensions yeah. in between. There's a section on dimensions in between dimensions. Okay. Right. Out of body experiences. Uh, let's see. From Big Bang oh, yeah. to Taurus. So they, they go through the whole like history of the universe, our place in time. Like, there's so much to this. Our place in time. Holy shit. There's so much to this, guys. Like, you know, what? that it's so deep. What would um, we have to do and say? I have to throw this out there because it's important that we do it every time. But what would we have to do and say about Bigfoot to get the government 
to spend <laughs> money on deep diving Bigfoot to harness the Sasquatch power for military purposes, just to yeah. have them do it. Could you could you imagine they have some... the strength of twenty men? <laughs> some Bigfoot <laughs> humans walking around. Not? Yeah. How do we know they're not? Yeah. Maybe that's why it's so hush hush. The program is being run by Bigfoot. Big feet. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're hiding Big Feet is because you know they have this this secret uh intermingling sexual program Chimera. between yeah. yeah, yeah. This 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 uh hybrid between human and Bigfoot. Bro, I, I burst out laughing when you said the freaking um ethereal. Is that the word? Ethereal. Ethereal. You said that, Ethereal. and yeah, I thought, I thought about um, on our Facebook meme zone thing. I think it was um, David Hoyt threw out uh, that freaking <laughs> that misspelled caption. It said, "This place is so urethral." <laughs> <laughs> the scenic landscape and stuff. I couldn't stop laughing when you said, <laughs> "Yeah, ethereal or whatever." <laughs> So, so there's um again the, there's tapes right there's they're called the Focus 13 tapes and it's these these tapes that you can you can actually buy them I don't know if they're legit or not but I found them on Amazon like 500 bucks they're pretty expensive um but I do know a guy who knows a guy who says he has them so I'm trying to get them for free if I do maybe I'll just give them to everybody post them or something but there's a Focus 15 and a Focus 21, which is travel into the past and travel into the future. So again, you can escape time and space. There, there's ways to get into that altered state of consciousness where you can travel through time and you can experience different timelines, which to me is wild. But that's closer to the end. I think that when people read the the title of this, this is going to be one of those very undervalued episodes. And... We're going to have to do this in a, in a in a broad sense. Like we've already got kind of the idea that we're going to do this again next week, um, but we're not going to be able to just dump 10 episodes of this right in a row. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe once a month or once every two months or something, we'll revisit this because this is I'm dude, I'm literally reading something right now about the cosmic egg. And it's yeah. like there, there is some sh crazy shit in here, and to see that it's coming from the CIA is absolutely mind blowing, dude. This is this is nuts. This is cool shit, dude. Yeah, Bro, just and just attention. I want to touch on something else that Jake said that I forgot to mention earlier. You know about like, you know, um, kind of like the woo aspect of this whole thing, and mm -hmm. you know with like what you're looking at the cosmic egg. Right. And then there's another idea of like the telluric fields that the body produces. Like there's this, this energy field that comes out of our body. It goes out about six feet and it's like a certain shape and all this stuff. Right. And the energy is flowing out of us. And just like what you would picture, uh, aura in, it's kind of like that, right? Picture like in your globe model, right? The earth has this magnetic field, mm -hmm. right? Where it's kind of like going in and out of the poles. Flux similar, lines. yes. Similar thing with our bodies and, and cells. Every living thing has like this, this field, right? Including mm -hmm. the universe, the cosmic egg. That is this field, right? This energy field. And essentially what you're doing is you're tuning yourself, your frequency. You are tuning it to the cosmic frequency, so that now you are not attached to this physical location in space time. Now you can, you, you, again, you're attached. You're a magnet. To, you, you can just, and now you can zip around the universe in your mind, I guess, you know? Dude, I just yeah. made a connection of, you remember when we were in that bookstore, Jeremy, over in uh, Menominee, and I was yeah. reading that book on Nostradamus. I've been kind of like getting into his stuff lately, kind of seeing how much of it's, legit or how much of it you really got to read into what's going on right uh and i believe that nostradamus was um got really big into occult type stuff when he started throwing out all of his predictions do you think that he may have been doing this sort of stuff and doing that looking into the future type stuff because he I mean, people have been talking about him a lot lately talking about when he predicted the death of the, a monarch in england and that there's going to be a uh, a king that's gonna or someone's gonna rule for a little bit and then they're gonna step down and a king's gonna uh, appear out of obscurity and you got that guy and i think it's uh australia right now that's claiming to be um part of the royal bloodline and that everyone's lying and stuff and that he deserves to be the king mm -hmm. and everyone's kind yeah, of talking about it. i think that i i think that there is a certain level of this going back in ancient 
in, in antiquity, right? And these certain mm-hmm. figures that seem to have somehow reached the Akashic records, right? Like you're saying, Nostradamus, like they pulled out prophecies or they were inventing shit that was just way beyond their time. And it, and people always seem to like suggest, well, were they helped by aliens or did they access some etheric mm-hmm. realm to get this information? And I think that there is some validity to that, whether they were doing that on purpose or not, who knows? But a lot of these guys were very, you know, like analytical and creative, right? And mm-hmm. it's very possible that, and especially back then when there wasn't all the distractions we have now with technology and all the poison and everything, right? Like it's very possible that some of those people back then were accessing this altered state of consciousness, this flow state, right? I mean, people do it now. For, I'm a musician. So when mm-hmm. I'm balls deep into writing or jamming, right? When I'm in, you know, jam not session. just jamming. Yeah. yeah. Not just in it for, for a while, but yeah, when I'm in for like two hours. Not just jamming it in, right? Right, yeah. right. When I'm taking my time, jamming and, it in and, you. you know, having my, <laughs> having my way, right? Like you get into this flow state, right? And that flow state is when you're the most creative. That's when, and many artists talk about this, right? And I think mm-hmm. that those people back then were in some form of flow state, which is like a, a little taste of that altered state of consciousness that they're talking about in this document. So yeah, totally possible that Nostradamus was in a flow state multiple times in his life and just ideas flowed through him. You know Mm. what I mean? Mm. Interesting stuff. I think we got to cut it off, but yeah, very, very interesting. Oh, I see when it's my turn to present hour and 15 minutes when Jeremy's presenting seven hours, four hours. (laughs) Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Listen, it's I'm only four hours because we cut it down from the eight that we shot that one day. Yeah, That's just, okay. I, just I think this you. is a, this is a good time to cut it anyways because again we we've established the pillars of the framework of the understanding. We've barely described what gateway process is. I think this is a good spot. It's a good thing that you know something about this because you're able to read us a section and then dumb it down and kind of put it in your own words and all that stuff. If it was me presenting this, I would read it and just be like, I don't know, guys. Anyway, (laughs) next one. I don't know. (laughs) know, I actually skipped a section in the intro of this document. There's a specific section where it straight out says, like, you cannot understand this shit with just logical thinking. You have to use creative thinking in order to understand this he even says that in the document i didn't read that but yes you have to think outside the box to fully get it this may or may not be something i fall asleep to tonight good (laughs) interesting stuff dude i i think uh man if you if you're listening to this tell somebody about it because i think this is going to be one of the deepest rabbit holes we get into this is going to be this is a deep one (laughs) this this is good stuff um love it Love it. Great stuff, dude. Yeah. So many branches, but yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't have an outro written, so I don't know if you want to do it so you can plug all the things that I don't remember we have. God, you are so half-assed. I I know. I'm such a piece (laughs) of shit. You are. It's cute. All right. Well, Jake, do you have anything else you got to say, buddy? No, no, I'm, uh, I'm, man, I wish we were just... We just bang out another hour right now because I want to keep arguing about this. I did you too. Like, but not. I'm not week. even arguing from a usual standpoint of being like, this is fake. This is dumb. Why are we wasting our time with this? Like, I believe this is real, but it's not something to be, you know, fiddled around with. But I'm just like, I agree. But agree. I like, I like blowing holes and stuff, right? Yeah. As well, it's it's like one of those things where you like you don't want this to be real. You just don't, right? And it, it, you look at it and you're like, this this can't be. No way. From a surface and, level, it's incredibly sci-fi. Right. It's a crazy sci-fi. But then, you know, yeah, you're right. You get into it, and you get into the science behind it, and it's just like, well, I ain't no scientist. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I can't I can't. I ain't for no sure rocket that, doctor. Yeah, I can't for sure say that this is, you know, nonsense. But it's like, yeah. As long as they taper down those like blanket statements, I think I'll be good. <laughs> We're on board. All right. Yeah. Very sci fi. It's interesting. Well, uh, just a reminder that we are shutting down the Infinite Rabbit Hole merch shop come January first. Get your stuff now if you want something. If you if you don't, then you don't. Like this. But it's yeah, that shirt, this one. I got my little uh Fresno Nightcrawler. 
uh shirt fake fake <laughs> fake um yeah, other than that astral projection <laughs> to be so determined, real i guess <laughs> to be determined um all right well that has been another episode of the infinite rabbit hole podcast please do us a favor and rate and review us we 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 don't get a lot of them do us that mm. favor let somebody know about the show Leave us a comment on our Facebook page or post something. Join our Facebook page. Just search Infinite Rabbit Hole. I think we're the only thing there. Join the group. We have a good time. We share a lot of really cool stuff. Other than that, yeah, that's it. I I, I don't know what else to say. Jeff just kind of threw this on me today. But that has been another episode of the Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast. We'll see you next time, travelers. Bye. Bye. Stay on your toes, Jeremy. Bye.